<laughs> that is fantastic. Fantastic background. I, 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 didn't hair mean to, I didn't mean to piss you off too much. Like, just, <laughs> I, I genuinely, I was trying to put the RDS behind me just to balance because this was a clean top. I just went, yeah, put this on. And then I thought, oh, oh this will piss Connor. Oh, yeah, go on. <laughs> no, it's funny because, um, like, it, it, it is that kind of like whatever's clean. I remember, like, I wore an Ireland jersey into the office. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. What are you wearing an Ireland jersey for? Is there a match or something? I was like, that was literally the only t shirt. <laughs> so <laughs> that's where we're, that's where we're at in our lives now yeah absolutely do you have a do you uh yeah it's fantastic i mean it it's uh, almost looks slightly fake it's that kind of good it, it's it's it depends on it like if i blocked out the light properly you, it gets really sharp like it's a hd camera that i have but it gets really really yeah. sharp but it, that's why the rds my whole from here up my big white forehead was just blending into the stands like it was what it was going on <laughs> well i actually meant uh, your mustache and your oh my oh so gee, good, yeah yeah of course yeah yeah it's fake <laughs> how are you keeping any of you good yeah not too bad not too bad tom i'm gonna hide myself for you because uh, i can't trust my um can't trust myself not to like kind of be realized i've been talking to you for 15 minutes and then I was like, why was I been? Why have I been looking at myself? Talk to you. Like, oh Jesus! Oh, yeah, I can't do that either. No, no, I switch it over to what we call it. Oh Christ! No, no, no. I don't know whether I'm being too honest about like some sort of vanity there, or it's just a <laughs> human nature to look at yourself. I don't oh, know. <laughs> it gets. Uh, I. It was weird. I was about ten minutes into one a couple of weeks ago, and I realized I've just been looking at myself. <laughs> oh my fucking god. Like, I felt like I should have ended the podcast or something just going on. I can only apologize. I know you don't realize I've just been staring at myself, but I'm a fucking lunatic. That, and, I, and I was okay with it. That's the thing. I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you look like that, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who wouldn't be looking at themselves? <laughs> it's all gone fucking weird. Even, even my, my mullet is blending into the hills of fucking Cashel here at the it's minute. amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's, mm. yeah although you, you have more hair than I've seen in a while. Yeah, and it's calm now because I had a had a shower. You see, I take this podcast very seriously, so I had a, a wash before I kicked off. Um, and uh, let me just see if I can move my mic. Uh, but um, yeah, so it, it, it it's kind of like it looks its best right out of the shower. You're like, that's its best. Um, but uh, and then it slowly, kind of slowly, gets bigger as the day goes on. I keep having to sweep it back. Yeah, I think we're all heading down that route. To say. Yeah. Well, great to have you. Hey, thanks a million anyway for taking time because you're you're busy. You're one of the few people that's really busy. Well, um, I guess so. Well, I mean, I certainly was last week and the week before. To be fair, um, I when when you kind of when you asked me about the podcast, uh, I we had I think we were filming the or we were doing like a kind of a, a tester sitcom, if you like, trying to see yeah. if we can trying to see if we can put twenty two minutes of an episode together, like like the pros do turns out we can manage to 17 and a half minutes um even though you had breaks 20 28 pages long i don't know how we managed but um uh, i think we must speak very quickly but uh yeah so we were we kind of put that together and like underestimated how long it would take me to edit it i was like i'm gonna bang this out in a day and at the end of day one I was like i think i've got all the movie and uh sound clips synced up so i'm ready to edit <laughs> like it was a yeah it was a whole new ball game but, but fair, uh, fair play. Like that's an, that's an under. Are you trying to force the hand of a of a chat, or are you just going for? Like, we have we have that kind of coverage anyway. We don't need to. Let's put it out on our over our own platforms. I think probably the former. To be fair, like um, like a, you know, it's not feasible to 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 do that uh, level of work even once a month or once every. Like to get out an episode like that, the amount of drafts you have to do in the script, like it's twenty eight pages long, and like. You have to have like it's not just like a sketch where you can put like I mean <laughs> you might already know how to write sitcoms we certainly didn't um um but uh, yeah so a bit of a massive learning curve there and like uh, beats to a scene you know uh our story arcs uh, act structure and to be fair like a lot of it we kind of ignored but we you know in the early drafts were a bit of a mess and then we yeah. got right he's like if you can write sketches what happens is right and this is really funny it's like so you have 28 page long script you can write sketches and you're not very good at narrative right so yeah like that for example right so you write the first five pages are like rip roaringly funny you're like this is this is really sucking diesel and then just the air just just falls out of it i was like by page seven it was like 
it was so boring. And it, was just like, <laughs> it was so boring for like page seven to like page 27. And then we were like, we've got a really good idea for like the end. So that'd be kind of funny. And we wrote that as a sketch. And oh, the last two pages are cracking. So we kept going like, we just need to fix those 12 pages in the middle. And then it's fine. And then we were like, well, look, we can't really fix the 12 pages in the middle unless we change what's the first, you know, what's on yeah, the first yeah, five yeah. pages. But then you're like, but then we lose all those great jokes. And then that's where you, <laughs> you get into that, where you're like the sketch writer versus the sitcom. Yeah. And, and then it was just really weird. Then it was like, it was then trying to, you know, uh, it was then trying to slow it down because like sketch is so fast. And yeah. It's cut so quickly. Well, first it's delivered so quickly and then it's edited so quickly because you're trying to kind of, you're trying to get it over in a minute and a half and two minutes. And, uh, and then suddenly you're like, no, you, that needs to be three minutes now. So That's funny, of, isn't it? That for so long, like you were trying to tighten it up, tighten it up, tighten it up. And now it's yeah. like, oh, lads, we better put a f- bit of fat on this this thing. Yeah. Jesus. And it's so weird then to kind of, to go like, that needs to be in quicker, you know? And then you're just like, then you put the whole thing together and you're like, it's, it's way too fast. Slow the whole thing down. Um, and then there's definitely scenes we didn't get the balance right on it. You know, we definitely, some scenes were too slow. Yeah. still too slow uh, and then some were too fast and just the rest just experience probably or it's probably just at this point maybe it's beyond the realm of my editing capabilities I've reached my this is my ceiling, never maybe. never <laughs> it's time to pass it over to a professional you're, you're tapping out at the pro 14 <laughs> semi-final you're going that's yeah. me this is my <laughs> yeah 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 I, I'm not I'm not Heineken Cup challenge just just yet yeah yeah but uh, how are you keeping Great, great. I love that shirt that you're wearing. That is a, that's, oh yeah, that is class it, for, for the audio listeners. It's, um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's fucking Garth Brooks, 1998. You like, it's, it's so gorgeous. Yeah, it is gorgeous. I was looking, so I was, uh, I was looking to kind of get a few new shirts. I don't know. I don't know why I'm buying clothes when no one's seeing them. Well, I guess you're seeing them now. Yeah, I'm delighted you're wearing it. And, uh, um, I was kind of like, oh, I was so, I basically went on vintage shops because I was looking for something kind of interesting. And I don't know, whatever websites I'm on buying new clothes, they're all just kind of look the same to me. And so I was like, I saw this and I was like, burst out laughing. I was like, amazing. It's like, it's so 90s. I was like, I want it. <laughs> I just, you've got a timber floor. I mean, man, if you want to kick off some line dancing, just <laughs> just go for it. Like, just go for it. I guess it's funny because I never saw the, uh, I mean, you're right. I never saw the Garth Brooks connection. What I was more thinking of was like, kind of like Chandler from Friends or something, you know, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe but this would have more color. <laughs> but I do think the 90s, regardless of, of uh, whether it was downtown Manhattan, well, I think there was a lot of country influence because shirts like that totally fit in. But like there's lads, I guarantee you still wearing those. Sh- well, not wearing them ironically. You're wearing yeah. it ironically because you're like, it's vintage, it's gas. It made me laugh. Lads are wearing that like mm, primo. That is. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I guess you can tell the difference. Well, maybe you can. <laughs> you just need a big belt buckle like to throw people yeah, all together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. A big and then go one. go go to the first Leinster match you're let into, like, and they'll just go, "What? <laughs> what's <laughs> what I, is he going on here? What, what's after happening? Yeah. Were you watching the rugby over the weekend? Yeah, I was. Yeah, um, you're because uh, you straight away you I knew you were a rugby fella because nearly one of the first times I ever talked, you you were able to pick what position I used to play in just by looking yeah, at me. Yeah, it's like, I used to like my special power. <laughs> It's like, how, how did it, I don't have cauliflower ears at all. You didn't go, you just went, yeah, you were a center, probably inside center too. I'd yeah, say. definitely. Yeah. Well, now you've got the, now you've got the mullet. So you look like your man, good you, isn't it? The, the <gasps> New Zealander guy. So you're really kind of laying it on thick there. Yeah. I wonder what position I used to play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a 12. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I was, I loved it. I mean, the, the, the England France game was, Class. Oh my god! It's like, is this the Six Nations? Yeah. Oh, because I was looking, going, oh no, England look really good. They <laughs> look yeah. really, really good. The speed they can swing it out to the wings, like, and you're going, oh no, I know. <laughs> we better start, uh, yeah, better start shutting that down early doors because we get our pants pulled down. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I love it. I mean, any kind of rugby on or any sport on is like just a, such a welcome distraction but uh, Six Nations is class who did you where did you go to school I went to Mary's in Rutmines 
Ah, nice. Yeah. No wonder then, because it's yeah. like, did you want to go to school or play rugby? Or did you just want to come here and just play yeah, rugby? You didn't have a choice. When I, I think it's different probably now, but when I was there, they used to, they used to confiscate all the soccer balls. Like, go away! Different, yeah, different era. Like, I don't think they're allowed to do that sort of stuff now, but like, they go out to the yard, like, and they'd like, the priests would take soccer balls. <laughs> Love like, it. A, like they caught you smoking or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're smoking a fag with a rugby ball. He's fine. Yeah, he's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. He's old school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Because yeah, we were we were the other way around. If a rugby ball was seen, it was just taken off you. It oh was, really? Yeah. Was yeah. it a hurling school or hurling? Yeah, hurling and and, and football too because it was South Tipperary, but it was it was very much yeah. hurling and football. But then, of course, yeah. By the time that guy, I think we were in sixth year. And we had like four, three or four clubs going to our school. So mm. it made sense to have a rugby team. Like, yeah. And should we got your man shagged off. The new guy stepped in and went, totally, let's have a rugby team. And Sherelle and Quinlan trained us. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> no way. So I was. Is he, he's, is he from Tipperary? Is he? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's one of the rougher sorts. He's... <laughs> <It> was... <laughs> I guess it's like, uh, I guess it's funny to be hearing him. How long did he train you for? It's funny to be hearing him on the telly probably each week. It's very weird knowing that he's a complete psychopath. Like, yeah, he's, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like he's so calm and collected. Like, but he's like next level crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. No, he trained us like he trained us while like, we were in sixth year. But it was, um, but he would he would have been. I went. I was with a club called Clam William in Tipperary, and he was yeah. would have been one of the four running. You know, he was top dog at the time, like because he was playing with Ireland and stuff like that. But he brought mm. out, like he brought out Ogar and he brought out Stringer to train us as well, take a couple of games oh, with us, like. Yeah. So it was weird, like because it was um, in a school. You're, it's nearly like sacred ground. We were actually training on a GA pitch, so it's like, oh no, oh yeah, yeah. But it was yeah. mental. Like I, I poached a couple of lads who were really good footballers. They were playing with the minor football, a yeah. minor team. And they were two twin brothers. They were like six four, and put the two of them on the wings. They were unbelievable. And a guy actually rang my parents' house, disguising his voice, threatening me. It was the most amazing thing ever. Like, <laughs> I swear to God, are you serious? Yeah, it's like threatening you to like obviously to bring them back to the football team. Yeah, don't be, don't be taking, don't be stealing poaching young for that old fucking old rugby. And then like. Two years later, of course, Monster get it, you know, start doing well and high. And every yeah. fella is a, an expert now, like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used, to, I used to play winger and you could see there was like, you'd just be terrified. You'd be, I remember going out uh, before the matches and you'd just be sizing up your opposite number. But I'm never bigger or anything like that. And I'd always be like, please, please, please have a speedy guy and not a big guy. You know, because that was it. They, they either put a big guy or they put a speedy guy, but they never did both. And uh, up until I was about 16, I wasn't fast enough to run around them. So I, I had to just pray that they weren't big guys. <laughs> <laughs> and what, was the, what was the progression then, early doors? Because I never really got it. I know, I think the very first time I, I, I was ever on a gig with you was actually in Scotland, I think, weirdly. We did the Perhaps two stands. Yeah, I was trying to think about that earlier. Yeah. We did the two stands. The Glasgow and the the Edinburgh stand. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In the same weekend. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and they were great gigs, weren't they? Sa oh, savage! Sa yeah. And I remember you teaming me up to it because I'd never done them. Like, and I remember you saying, like, "Oh, if you think the Edinburgh one's nice, wait, you see the Glasgow one tomorrow." Yeah, like, like uh, Glasgow is like, I mean, it's just such a good gig. And what was it? Was it the Monday Night Raw, the Tuesday Night Raw? Was it that? Was it that time? I think it was. Yeah. yeah, I think oh, it was. God. Like it was a pound in. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like amazing. Like, and this wasn't like this wasn't in the eighties. Like this was <laughs> this yeah. is not that long ago. It was a pound in or two pounds in, and uh, yeah, open mic comics um, with a headliner. I think at the end, and uh, yeah, bedlam. The students and they really went for it. It was just such a fun gig. I remember thinking this place, there's there's no messing in this place in Glasgow because your man, the, the guy behind the bar had long hair and had fangs. <laughs> did you ever, did, did you see him? He actually had I fangs, implants. I didn't that. Oh, did yeah. it, it kind of vaguely rings a bell. The fa yeah, okay. Yeah, he had fucking fangs like a dog, like a, like a vampire. Like he had these big giant teeth. But they like, real? Yeah, he had implants put in. <laughs> 
So I was like, nobody's messing around in this joint. This is like, a, what's that movie? You know, is it w- w- once? No, uh, it's the one uh, with George Clooney. Yeah, I tried to think. Oh, it, it's a phrase. It's a. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We're both thinking, is it once upon a time in Hollywood? And it's definitely yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Once upon and it's a time not. Time, it's so, yeah. not, And there's people listening right now, and we're not googling you're this either. Screaming. You're we're screaming not googling this, Connor. <laughs> we're going to sit here like two. Oh, Heading for middle-aged idiots going, in a what? Pub. Yeah, 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 in a pub because there's no crack in Googling it and actually yeah, finding yeah, it out. Um, you know, there is no crack in it. Rather, it was still some movie, though. <laughs> it really made me sit up anyway. No, no spoilers, but I mean, at this point, it's funny when people say, like, no spoilers, and you're like, well, the movie's been in 20 years, like, or 20, no, 30 that's... years, like, yeah, you had your chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. So, and when Foil Arms and Hog came together, like, what was the... Because I can remember, do you know when there's fable things where you look, did I, did I dream that? Or did I remember that? Did that really happen? And I can remember, because you did stand-up yeah, solo. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I did stand-up for, I think, maybe two, three years, maybe. Yeah. And did you go um, to college with the other two boys, or what was the crack? Yeah, I met them in, in university, and we were doing and uh, we were doing different degrees and that, but... Um, there was, like, a, a drama society, I guess, which was... Um, kind of like a world of its own in that it's funny when you think of student societies you think of like ones that like meet up twice a week and then they do an event or you know they go on a trip or something like this was like next level it was like you were joining like a professional theater really yeah it was it was you were like you were joining a professional theater setup like there was people in charge and like there was a sh- two plays on every single day that had tickets sold what like it was it's insane. what like two plays and they had two plays and they had casts i know some of them had smaller casts obviously smaller plays but a lot of them had like you know four or five people in acting they uh, director assistant director did someone on lights they had makeup uh, <laughs> someone on sound they had someone to operate it sometimes they had a lot of the time they had set designers and people who they build the sets in there they had actors they build the sets and that was two, two so you'd have a run so you'd like it was just insane. Like I, when I think of how did you get on in college, I actually go, "Oh, it's great, crack! I really enjoyed." It. And that's just what I think of. I think of putting on productions and the like mania of it. And <laughs> you had a, you had a budget, like you were given a check, you know, with your budget, and then you had to you had to say what you spent your budget on, and it would all be accounted for and everything. Like like amazing life lessons, I tell you. But like when people go, "How do how was your college?" That that's what I think of. I don't think of the four years I spent studying science. It kind of is a that's a secondary thought. Oh yeah, and I, I did some education there as well. <laughs> so like, so there was a different world. So we just spent all of our time down there. I'd come in, you know, I'd go to my lecture sometimes, and I'd go to like whatever I had to go to in college. I went to, and whatever I could get away with not going to, I didn't go to, and uh, and then I spent the rest of the time down there, like like doing stuff like not, wow nothing like doing stuff like what are we doing this week what's going on and yes yeah, uh, brilliant yeah another another world that's but incredible you know, like we were, we're separated as well from the rest of the college like in that you know well you were in the main i guess the main arts building you know, yeah you were there but what i mean is you were the very lower ground too i think it was called and the only thing other thing down there was toilets and a small computer room and that's it. So you just nobody ever came by. Nobody. You just it was like a world of its own. It's amazing. That's phenomenal. But by the yeah. time you'd be ready to rock out of it, like you're, you're. That sounds like a professional outfit. Like it that you're ready to ways. rock. Yeah. Like I, obviously there was another side to it as well, where like if you were a beginner, you're coming in and you were young, like you, you know, in your first year, there was there was plays for you to have as well. And there was, that weren't just taken as seriously or weren't as intense. But I mean, I know it turned a lot of people off. Like, you know, a lot of people were like, this is, this is too much. For oh, me. there's I no crack. To, right. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But there was loads of crack to be had as well, but it was like everything you can expect from a drama society. Like, <laughs> who, like you know, <laughs> you had like the actors, you know, yes. you know, and they were kind of a group unto themselves. I was not in that group. And they, they were a group unto themselves and they, they were very learned. Like really, they were like, it wouldn't be unusual to find them reading Beckett like outside. The <laughs> I don't know whether that was kind of performative, like, but there was probably a bit of that going on too. But they were writing their own plays as well. Well, actually, you know, the writers were a separate group as well. Were, oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and then you had just like the the actors, the people who 
who were going to be famous, if you like, you know, uh, they were like the people who were going to go to the, you know, the colleges in London and that, and the mixed bag of different groups or whatever. Um, and uh, then you had the Messers, <laughs> which made, <laughs> made up about myself and a few of the lads and then a bunch of other people. And um, yeah, lovely mix. Um, oh, and the dramatic, the really dramatic people. Yeah, it was... Um, uh, a very dramatic place to be. So, you could, like, because uh, that was something that, sh- like, because obviously you you went to do science, so you didn't, you weren't initially compelled to 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 go for, or was it a case of you didn't want to tell your disappoint your parents and going, I'm <laughs> yeah. doing arts, but you were just moonlighting as an actor then. <laughs> pretty much. I love that. <laughs> he'll that's do science. Just... He'll get a job out of science. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, lo- yeah. Look what happened. <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty much. That's bang on the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went off to be a civil engineer, you know, so like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, Did you do it? Did you do civil engineer? Oh, no, I did. I was a civil engineer, yeah, yeah. But I suppose technically I am a civil engineer, but uh, yeah, yeah, I did. I went off uh, probably seven or eight years. When did um, you do that now? I didn't... Uh, UL. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because, I mean, there was the option of going to UCC with the... Because the sisters were kind of... The sisters are lecturer stuff down there, but really yeah. rugby. It was all rugby, like, so the sister club to... Tom William would have been Shannon. So it didn't, I yeah. didn't give a fuck where I was going to college. I was like, ah, don't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the crack is in here. So yeah, it was all yeah. secondary to it. But Brilliant. But yeah, I mean, it was a court. I, but then I, yeah, I mean, had there been a drama society of that scale, I think probably I would have been drawn to that too. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you can, yeah, you could see the attraction to it. Plus the mess and, and the fact that you're kind of secluded, on, hidden away. Like, a, Yeah, there was definitely a bit of that going on, yeah. That's great. And is that where you, you met? The, you ran into the two boys then? Yeah. Yeah, that's where with the lads. Mm-hmm. Now, explain it for all the listeners. Foil, Arms and Hog. The name. Yeah. Well, they actually kind of started at one of those those um, parties that we uh, we were at, one of those drama sock parties. It was actually funny because I'd been to I'd been to parties for years or what, uh, with, you know, with my, I guess my my best friends really from, from, from school and that. And, uh, and they were a, a different prospect with the, you know, the, 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 the parties with your mates from school, you'd, you'd be slagging each other, you know, there'd yeah. be a lot of that going on. And that was, it was a brilliant crack. And then you go to the drama sock parties <laughs> and there was dancing, you know, <laughs> there was, uh, there was singing. There was like, uh, there was dancing, there was singing. There was like loads of messing, but not in, not slagging and not, not character assassination. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's did. what I saw in the panto when I went. I didn't know anything really? about. I knew no. Even though I'd been doing stand up for years, and I did, <laughs> I had done some of the telly stuff. But I hadn't, I yeah. hadn't gotten that grounding of the theatre. Yeah. And I rock in like to, and this is a pro panto. Everybody's back over from London or wherever. Like one yeah. lad, the lead he was in from. I think he was touring with cats. I think he'd just come from Hong Kong or New Zealand or something. And everybody's like, darling. And it's just the, yeah, from, the, from the moment. Yeah. These people were so interesting. Yeah, so interesting. Like yeah. they're either their, their engine is running at like 9,000 revs of pure joy or that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. The gearbox is falling anything. out. You know what I mean? Like that's what I used. That's what I loved about it is that they go like, if you, you, you know, you're improv like, I guess we we love to improvise like, yeah. in in work. Like I, I don't mean just like you know, perform, but like we love to to mess. Like you know, like stupid stuff. Like uh, if Flan goes in late, you know, or something like that, I'll go, oh, um, you know, or like um, I'm really sorry. Do you work here? You know, like <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. You'd yeah. be like, oh god, you know, I'm in, uh, no, I'm I'm upstairs, and he's like, what do you guys do in here? You know, we and then we like, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. like ten minutes of just like role playing, I guess, and we, I'm doing that almost every day. But like that was what drama sock parties were like. There was like you just so you'd put out an idea, and then we just you just run with it. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, have you ever tried to get your mates to play charades? No, 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 yeah. no, no, and then after a while, right, fine, right, fine, right, fine, right, <laughs> yeah, like, it wouldn't, that wouldn't be a problem at a party like this, no, like, we're playing charades, hooray, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a dancing thing, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh yeah. my god, well, I mean, they, like, I, they, I all, like <laughs> they all do, they'll go at the drop, literally, somebody will have a hat to drop, at the drop of a hat, they will have yeah, a hat yeah, to yeah. drop. Great, it's brilliant. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was wonderful. But uh, one of these, one of these parties was where we came up with the name, which is we were right at the back and uh, kind of chatting to each other. And um, 
I guess we were slagging each other off uh, maybe in a bit of a departure, but it was myself and the two boys and uh, we'd just done a bunch of gigs and we were, uh, where we'd advertised ourselves as sketch comedy is upstairs starting at eight, uh, which wasn't the catchiest name. Um, <laughs> that was the full title. <laughs> I love that. I love the notion that in years, like had you gotten really successful off the basis of that and you're buying things with checks and your full title was on the top of the check. <laughs> <laughs> sketch comedy sketch upstairs, comedy upstairs starting at eight. So uh, we were like, oh, we need to come up with a new name. But we, I, I think what we were doing was we, we weren't thinking we needed to come up with a name. We were just kind of teasing each other. We'd had a, a week of comedy or you know performing and um uh we were talking about oh sean finnegan um blondie if you like yeah and uh he was complaining that he was like uh in, in a joke way you know that he had all the worst roles you know and he was basically just standing there to throw the ball up for you know for a flango to whack yeah. it with the bat and he's just like you know it's just like i'm just the foil i just i'm just here to to serve you guys to make jokes like so and then i was like i kept doing foil face like you know like whatever <laughs> it was i can't remember and then he like he turned on me you know and sean finnegan is, is quite sharp really when it comes to he uh he retorts you know yeah his, his um what do you call repertoire, repartee, repartee, I don't know, it's yeah. a French word, but uh, he, he's very, very sharp, and uh, um, anyway, he was just like, what, what are you talking about, you know, like, uh, you, you couldn't even play those roles, you, you, you just, you, you make too much of everything, everything is arms and legs, you're always <laughs> moving around, you're, you're, like, you're, you're, like a, you're like a Greek, you know, actor, you know, when you have the hands that come out with the hand out, uh, so that became arms, and then and then we couldn't, we then we were like, oh my God, they're, they're good nicknames. And we said, we need one for, for Sean Flanagan. And uh, we're like, well, he always, Sean Flanagan said, he always hogs the best parts. And Brilliant. Like, oh yeah. We'd had, we hadn't realized it yet, but because uh, Flango was, uh, he was, I suppose he was trying to become an actor at the same time as he was doing this. We, yeah. he, he had an awful lot of free time. Um, and whereas we, Sean Finney was still finishing college and I was doing other other things. So I was doing a, a course or a, in, in FOSS. And uh, um, so he had all the time. So he was writing the scripts. And if you write the script, you yeah, get to you... put yourself in whatever part you want. And so he had all the best parts. It was basically the Flango show. In, 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 it's in not Sunshine. a bad name for a show either. Yeah, 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 it's not. <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, so he was called The Hog. Um, yeah, he was called the hog and then we decided to put them together and i didn't really like the name I was like, oh. <laughs> did you not no i didn't i thought it was interesting for a while and then i can't i really went off it because i saw oh. i was like it's impossible to remember i was like every single uh, mc or compare is getting it wrong and not just in, not just like in england or scotland like like everywhere it's like even people we know are saying it wrong and i was like this is bad uh, no one's going to know who we are you know it'd be impossible to catch on and Sean Finnegan was like Leonard Skinner and I was like well he's like Leonard Skinner and I was like yeah he's like that's a difficult name I was like, yeah. he was like, but once you get it you know it and I was like oh Leonard Skinner so after that I was like yeah well maybe Leonard Skinner actually kind of has a kind of a weird internal rhyme to it I don't know but anyway so we're stuck with it now I think is the point <laughs> it's great like I mean, because it, it, it's not a play on, you know, it's not a play on anything else that's been done before. I always thought it was brilliant to get, but <clears throat> watching you, I think I did an awful lot of treat in watching you and you do it very, I can't believe that you actually, it wasn't art that you went to study because you're unbelievably good at acting like. like <laughs> oh, cheers. No, you. Like, uh, it wasn't always that way. I think it's pro possibly just endless practice. I think yeah, I was very poor. Yeah. There you go. Well, I mean, if nothing else. For me, anyway, I think, I think Flango uh, and Fingo were always, were always decent. Flango, especially, you know, he was a, a child actor. Like, he was in movies and that. But uh, I was way behind, I think, at the start. Yeah, but I mean, I, did, I mean, for anybody who's kind of wondering, they're going, which he, I, he is the tall one of the three. And he... You would be most recognised at the minute right now for those brilliant curry ads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a bit of crack. Uh, but they, 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 they have you stamped all over them, though. They're not. They're you know they're lovely. They're lovely people, actually. The 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 uh, the fine folks at uh, McDonald's Curry, the uh, and the crew who do it, the boys and girls, um, or the group that do it. So 
it's just great to work for it. It's really sound and it's always really fun. And you get a trip away, like mad places. Like we uh, went to India for one. Stop. And, yeah. And it was funny, right? Because we went to India on a, a shoestring budget and a director from a really sound lad called Chris Cotton, who's, uh, he's calmed down a bit now, but was a bit of, uh, he's, 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 he's mad. Like he's great, but uh, he, um, yeah, went to the shoestring budget and then came back and people were like, love the ad, where'd you shoot that? And they're like, India. And they're like, oh, I thought it was a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, okay, job done. <laughs> but it was, it was funny, it was like all sorts of amazing places that I'd never get to go. It was in Estonia, there was Bulgaria. Um, there, Estonia, Bulgaria, India, and well, Ireland. But the uh, India one was 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 really interesting because um some of it was shot in like a spice market, like kind of on the fly. Well, on the fly, I think it probably, probably cleared, but like, you know, it's, it's India. There's lots of, lots of people around and uh, there's, you know, uh, loads of kids who yeah. just kind of hang around, you know, <laughs> and they're just so gorgeous. Like, there's like, you know, they, they're, they're always like smiling and they're just so excited to be around anything with cameras. I mean, there's such a huge culture in yeah. Mumbai of, of um, uh, Bollywood. Sure. I mean, they're, yeah, exactly. they're revered so, like gods. So anything like uh, any sort of, um, new, you know, anything with a camera. And I, I felt almost embarrassed. I felt embarrassed. Like I was like, they were like, Oh my God. Like, you know, like, Oh, this is amazing. You know, like, and I was like, it's just an advert. It's just an advert. <laughs> what I love is, yeah. What I love that is if they like, they revering you at the moment, look at this majestic, <laughs> he's all arms. He's beautiful. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's so love. And then all of a sudden you tell them what, and you give them, you know, a taste of it. It's like, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> What is this? Yeah, you know, they probably might not own. I don't know. Did they probably the idea of curry sauce? I mean, to someone from India, I don't know how they would think of that because I would imagine that curries are made from scratch using, yeah. you know, uh, tons of different spices. And the idea of, <laughs> hey, check it out. You see what you do there? Well, I can do in two minutes. It and is. It's like, but it doesn't have the flavor. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and- yeah, and then we're gonna pour it over some fried potatoes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, but uh, no. So I did feel that kind of like I, you you probably you probably know what I'm talking about here. But like as a kind of a stand up or comedian, like your you know your instinct is like you you you're looking for a validation. You know, yeah. you want um, and and you yeah you, you maybe don't like receiving validation for not really having done anything. Like there's nothing worse. Like that's why I've never really enjoyed birthdays that much it's oh like, i know it's it's I, being irish this? and being a being a comedian yeah that's, maybe that's it it's um, I, and uh yeah so i just feel like you don't deserve it but like if ever i felt like i didn't deserve it it was shooting that uh, ad in india and we oh, yeah. went to a rural um paddy field and uh it was in the middle of the day it was really hot and the, it was a village kind of based around the paddy field and they weren't working at the time because it was too hot i think they work as I know they work really early in the morning and then late at night right and then rest during the day because it's just too hot but this amazing like place that just you'd never get to see I guess and go into this village and they're ba- they've lined the the street either side and because they're not working I mean they probably work enormously hard like because they're not working they don't really have an awful lot to do and uh, so they watch the whole shoot and so, like, I had an audience of about two hundred people Stop. looking, and like, I'm, the worst is like, you know, you know, when you're shooting anything, like, you have to say the same line yeah. like thirty times, and I'm just like, I was like, I just, I said, please, please, I was like, I, I, I was like, start, start to try and entertain, you know, so, like, I felt guilty. I was like, how can they still be watching this? This must be so I, boring. Oh my god, you're making my skin crawl. I know oh. exactly what you're talking about. It's like, no, no, I was like, and then it's just like you're trying to be. You know, and then it's like there's a there's there's two crews there, and like when you're on an ad, like they try to treat you really well, like you know. But again, it's not something I'm really comfortable with. I don't mind, like just tell me where to stand, and I'll do the thing. I get, I do what you want me to do, but like don't be running with uh, with like a water or stuff. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not comfortable being treated. Yeah, being treated like royalty <laughs> basically makes me very uncomfortable, and so. um 
but uh, you know, there's like it's wonderfully kind and everything. But you're trying to like, oh no, it's your grand, it's your, your grand, it's your grand. Yeah, like, you know, Irish people in restaurants, like yeah, know, yeah, 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 yeah. It's <laughs> you know, um, but uh, yeah, but yeah, quite quite experience. I d- I got pulled on at one time. I was on um, I I was no, it was only a small part, but I was in a show called Ripper Street, yeah. and uh, I played a cop, and I like that. My role had become slightly, I say. Increased in importance ever so slightly as per them. For me, it nothing seemed to change, but I noticed all of a sudden they were coming running with water and stuff like like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I st- I stopped this woman. I went, honestly, you don't you don't have to. I know you think it's cold. It's it's not that cold. I, I you don't have to put a jacket on me every, and you don't have to run and get stuff. It, she goes, it's my fucking job. She she said it like, <laughs> I don't want to be nice, but it's my job to be nice. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just gonna stay doing my fucking job, okay? So it's yeah. like, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah understood. Yeah. Say I no more. You Do you know? So you, you just you never. It's hard to get right, obviously, and you're probably right. That was probably. The, probably the right thing to do is to kind of let them do the job and then at the end of the day go look thanks very much i appreciate it you know that was you did a great job or something like that or i i would imagine maybe it would be better um i remember being in a, in uh, on holidays and i was in um a restaurant i think it was maybe a french restaurant and uh um i decided when the waiter came over to help him um <laughs> <laughs> arrange the cutlery there you, you go know, mammy <laughs> and I, I, I just like I, I, he came over. He had a big like hot bowl or something or other, and uh, a stew. No, it wasn't stew. <laughs> something I probably couldn't pronounce. And uh, I tried to make a space for him at the table. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he only had two hands, and his two hands were. But anyway, he was absolutely not impressed. And he put down the dish on the kind of table thing that he was I had it with, and uh, and then rearranged what I had done. <laughs> And then did it again without saying a word, and and, uh, and uh, I was just like, "Well, that's me told." <laughs> wow, what a slap in the arse for you! I know, yeah, yeah. But Pure so, French yeah. though, like they would, yeah, yeah. You can imagine the yeah. French going, "No, yeah, even a bo- yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah." I'm mucking it, it up for him, you know. I'm just getting too interfering, you know, too Irish. Well, you you stepped over the line. All of a sudden, now you're the waiter. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. So uh, I've learned learned my lesson there. Let him, let him, do, let him do his thing. What is it like to sell out huge theatres in other countries? Uh, it must be, like, as we just yeah. talk about emotions that you'd be feeling in, sm- in certain situations, yeah. like, like the phenomenon, obviously, I mean, because your, your internet game is, because, thank God, it's translatable. Do you know, unlike what direct stand-up is, you're, you can actually form a brilliant sketch and now making sitcoms as well. It is translatable. Now it's, there's nothing like the live performance when you see Foil Arms and Hog because you can see you're having the crack in ah, that too. So like, fun, I know, like yeah. there's times there when I see you. I remember we were at the Vodafone and Natasha, I was just after doing the gig and Natasha went, Foil Arms and Hog, we have to go see the boys. I think Paul Curry had been on Witchy or something. Yeah, so it was just beautiful. madness. Yeah. You know, it was just going to be a tent full of madness. And <laughs> you did a, there's a, I can't remember what bit it was, but you, oh, you're, you're an asshole or I think you're obnoxious. It, there was oh, a game, yeah. it was a game show. Who's a prick? You're a prick. Who's a prick? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you did this bit where you're just going <laughs> and you ran around the entire fucking tent. It's too just big. Going, it's too big. Yeah. I was drinking people's was, drinks, eating their food. Yeah, yeah. And you could see the lads looking at each other while you were running around just going, yeah, like <laughs> pretend shagging the air and everything. Like, yeah, I'm the fucking man. Like, and it was like, well, that's the embodiment of every dickhead we've ever seen throughout <laughs> yeah, our lives. Yeah, yeah. That's, but you could see the two boys looking at each other going, he is tearing the hole out of this. Now he's <laughs> it's having... funny because like, they're like that bit, like I, I, I you know, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's uh, it, it, sometimes those rooms are too big and you just run out of steam and yeah like, where do you go though if you started uh, you gotta <laughs> if you started you gotta finish yeah but uh, sometimes I think one, one or two occasions uh, I, I learned the hard way it's just like you get back and all the energy's gone out of the sketch it's like, <laughs> I think the only thing to do there is just to be kind of honest and be like you know I usually out of breath going I, I think I, uh, I think I think I think I took too long sorry and, you know or whatever and uh, there's nothing audiences appreciate more than honesty especially if it hasn't worked you know? yeah 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 because they're now oh, they're in on the gag yeah, with you like he, yeah. yeah he knows that he wasn't funny well that's okay yeah yeah <laughs> but like yeah. to do uh because I mean you were you sold out all over the UK you sold out in Australia as well didn't you uh yeah the uh, Australia I think the Australia shows are, were a good bit smaller but the UK um yeah, the UK date. So it depends on where you go. Like, 
places can really surprise you like um you know you could book you book shows i mean every so often you, we, we book a bunch of shows in places that we've never been before I, I've ne- you know i have never heard of before and um you get ones that barely sell or you get ones, you know, ones that sell, you know, 200 seats in, or 250 seats in a six or 700 seater. And you're, you're, Oh God, what are we going to do there? They're all going to oh, sit at the back. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're terrified up until it's always fine, by the way, that's what I should say. It's always fine. Or then you go to a place, the Reading, for instance, where it's a thousand seater and zero expectations. And it was sold out with um, six weeks to go you just i just can't sometimes you just can't tell can't tell can't tell and i've tried i've tried i've like tried to figure out what the secret is and yeah i haven't been able to um but uh we yeah yeah I, I, I don't know it's it always surprises me it's always it's always surprising like you you know it's funny because you you book one in london and then you're like expect that one to sell out and it doesn't and you're really annoyed um because uh, well, not annoyed. That's that, that's that's strong emotion. But you expect it to you expect it to sell out, so you're a bit kind of confused. And uh, then the one, the rural, more rural ones, you're not expecting anything from, and then they are. So I don't understand. You were on. There's there's things. Do you know the way some things just resonate, and and I can't get some stuff out of my head that absolutely. But I I, I don't know. Was a part of who's a prick? You're a prick. I, I possibly, but there was one. It was an item about. It was like a questionnaire of a dickhead move. I can't remember was it in that sketch, and it was something about eating a, a eating a breakfast a roll with grated cheese in the car. Was that part of that one, or is that a much um, older sketch? No, I think that's funny actually. I think that we used to have the we used to do a really risky thing, which was we used not risque, but <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it was a little bit risque for us, you know. With a, uh, no, we used to do a really, really risky thing where we do the asshole improvisation round. Yes, and yes. And we say, um, we get a bunch of locations, I think, from the audience. And then, you know, we probably was, um, one of them was like, uh, you're in a car. And then you know, I'd be like, uh, I've got a roll with grated cheese in it. And I was like, oh, you know, and then, you know, you're in a hospital. And then you're like, um, and, you know, disconnect all the drips. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> you know, it was... <laughs> And it, it had the potential to go like amazing or it has the potential to bomb. So we cut it in the end because it was too unpredictable. And we were just like, you know, because you've done it. The sketch itself probably ended up nearly 10, 12, 15 minutes if you put the end on it. Yeah. And we were like, it's too long. Like we are squeezing that dry. And yeah. We're getting greedy, you know. Um, so yeah, so we, we cut the improv round. The improv round was when it went well, it was really funny. There's something, there's one on film about an orphanage, and I think Sean <laughs> Flanagan is in some way burning it down or something. It goes, oh, yeah. it goes, it goes way too far, and like yeah. you can just see he's like all of us are looking at him horrified, and it's improv, so you know, to a certain extent, anything could come out, like, and yeah, you know, obviously that's what came out, and we're just looking at him, and the audience can see he he's he's crying laughing he's laughing so much he doesn't know he's just <laughs> what he said and so they kind of go with it i guess but uh, yeah you kind of don't know what's going to happen with that. i don't i yeah i don't know why that grated cheese roll it just stuck in my head because like that is so on point for a dickhead move to sit into your car <laughs> somebody sits in and go all right i just i've yeah. forgotten that yeah, even sliced easy. cheese okay yeah, you know, grated even, cheese. Grated yeah. cheese. It's, <laughs> fuck. That is yeah. so on point. Yeah, yeah. Because I guess it's funnier than popcorn. Well, you know popcorn's going to go everywhere, but grated cheese, like you're like, yeah, I do find bits of grated cheese and that's kind of rubbery, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the, um, the, although I, uh, on, on a selfish point of view, my favourite sketch of a year that I've ever seen was The Net People. I, it just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it cracked me up beyond belief. It was just this moment of silliness where all your noses were squished. <laughs> Are you speaking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was so stupid. Uh, you know, it's funny. It, like, it, it, it used to work. We used to do it. Uh, I wonder, did you see it when we used to do down City Limits? I saw it. it. I opened for you one night in Clonmel. Oh, was that where we did it? And I saw it. And I remember going, oh, my God. And God bless him. Like, I don't think some of the audience were ready. No, if you know what I mean. No, I, and that was that was true forever with that sketch. It was a room splitter. But the problem, the, the reason we kept doing it was because the people who liked it 
like loved it. You know, like well, like yeah. you were saying there, the people who didn't like it just were like, oh, I just didn't get that. That was a bit weird. But the people who liked it were like, <laughs> were bringing their mates to the show in Edinburgh. Oh yeah, I would. Yeah, just to see that one. Like, yeah, they were like because the net people. So you have to see the net people thing. It's just doing the stupid thing. It's net to nets and putting places. <laughs> so you got to see it. You got to see it. So we were, we were selling tickets based on the net people, even though half the room didn't enjoy it. So it's kind of worth keeping, you know. <laughs> but uh, it was whatever t- time it came out. I don't know. Was it 2013 or 2014 or something like that? But um, uh, where it was right on point to whatever sci-fi was around at the time, or you know that sort of weird. Sort yeah. Of stuff. It stopped working now, and uh, it, it ceased to be. I don't know. We're probably not doing as good a job of it, but uh, and maybe maybe. I think it was also funnier the smaller the room. And the more grimy the room, the funnier it was. Yes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. For some reason, when you make the venue bigger and classier, well, one thing you can't see the squished faces as well. <laughs> yeah. You, the, the kind of homemade nature of it, which is true, which was they were fishing nets. That Push, we, just, you, the, we, you... we needed the pole. We needed the pole for, I can't remember, some sort of exercise thing or something, the uh, sketch. So we're like, where are we going to get these poles? And someone's like, well, I've got three fishing nets at home. We just cut off the bowls every day. So they were lying in their office for a year, like just as nets. And uh, the lads used to put them on and make faces. And it's like, <laughs> oh, that's gross. And then, and then we were really stuck for a sketch one year. And they're like, is there anything in that net thing that Fingo sometimes does? And we were like, it is kind of gross. And I was, and I was like, it's, it's kind of funny. It's really funny. Okay, we'll choose that. And then Sean Flanagan went off and wrote this kind of like, a kind of sci-fi kind of thing. Kind of I love it. There's like that necromancer kind of vibe to it. Like yeah, the prophecy is always the prophecy. prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's like it's one of those sketches that we probably took too long. Probably needed to be a minute long. It was like we'll squeeze five out of it. <laughs> I, I would, yeah, I would have been happy enough for it. I can't help but I didn't. Now, don't tell me you can. You're so ridiculously talented. You play piano as well, because I know you. I uh, know I don't like. I'm not. No, I don't play piano. To be fair, like I do. I, I can play some things on the piano, but I can't. Uh, I, can't, I can't, can't really read music. I'm too slow. I can read it, but it will take me a while. But I use it to to uh, write songs on, like just to get tunes for. And then I, um, I work out the chords, like yeah, simple, simple stuff. Like to be fair, and I'm like, oh, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. Put the put it together, and then um, give it to Sean Finnegan, and he's a good guitarist and. He can make, and I'm a decent pianist, and he can make something out of it. Then, so I put the, I put the kind of, I choose the chords and the the music or the timing or something like that. But I know I'm not. I wouldn't. I play piano in the show, but that's only because I've gone ahead and learned two songs and <laughs> over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> but no, I'm not. I'm not the guy to turn to at a party. Oh, bang us a tune there. You're like, uh, no, no. Come on, now it's kind of drama society. Somebody would have bust <laughs> yeah, yeah. something out. Just <laughs> everybody. <laughs> that was the thing. I just because I, I, and it's it's really interesting to talk to you because you saw it from the outside in. Come, you were like, I'm science. Oh, this is drama. You know, they don't see it. That, like there was a chap I, I remember. He was he refused to call. Like a night at the comedy club would be just a night at the comedy club and it would be a first half, a second half with a break mm. in the middle. And he would repeat repetitively call it the first act. Oh, and the yeah. The second act. And you're like, yeah. what? <laughs> no, it's yeah, not. You, you do get stuck with those things. Like a, a, a friend of mine was going for like a job interview and I was like, uh, how's the job audition? <laughs> <laughs> the audition for the job. <laughs> Hello, I am here to audition for the position of marketing manager. <laughs> Scarf on the whole yeah, lot. Here is my monologue. The, the, so you were saying you were going, what how many, how many, I know I, I hate to ask it, but how many, how many gigs? What was pulled on you? The day Leo uh, stood on the on, and a year ago about and half about half of everything, half of the hour. Oh no, no, sorry, more than that, really. Um, we had an American tour. Oh yeah! Oh two, shit! That's right. Two Canada dates, and so that was was there seven dates in the US and two dates in Canada. They were gone. They were supposed to be this October, but I think that was just not going to happen. We kind of you have to pull those early because the well, obviously we just knew it wasn't going to happen. But like the um, uh, the what was it going to say? Oh, the visa processing and all that sort of stuff, and and that takes months. So you kind of have to make it. 
relatively early decision or you'll find you'll hand it over an awful lot of money to uh, get things rubber stamped. Um, uh, so that then about half of the UK tour. So we, we made a few dates. We didn't make it to, we didn't do London and Exeter and Portsmouth and um, uh, yeah, about three or four others that we had to cancel. Um, but I, I have to say like fairly lucky to be perfectly honest because most comedians, as you know, tour in the autumn. Yeah. So we tour in the spring and we only started touring in the spring was because when we started touring, we couldn't get dates in the autumn because there was too much competition. There's too many people touring. So we ended up in this cycle of touring every spring and finishing the tour, having a few days off and then writing an Edinburgh show, which is horrific, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you're like, ah, the tour is finished. And it's like, and it's May. Time to write a new show. It's like, it's not really what you want to do, but um, can't complain really. It meant that we kind of had, we were able to structure the dates we wanted. So but, but what I'm saying is, you know, we finished half of our tour dates as a result. Whereas if we'd had an autumn, we wouldn't have got any tour. Yeah, but that's, yeah. You that's... know, and uh, you'd have to feel for the, the I guess, uh, any, anybody who's, um, you know, who to his tour in Northern Moor, probably more pertinently, people who just do, are doing, you know, not touring or, you know, weekly gigs or whatever like that would be the most affected. So I can't really complain there. Half a tour is, is pretty, pretty good, you know. And the, because, I noticed the moment at all, well, not the moment at all, I said the, the boys are very serious a couple of years, when you properly got an office, you know what I mean? And everything oh, started yeah. to look, I was like, oh, this is looking sharp now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the office, we'd, we, we'd, uh, the office in the Casey or industrial estate in, in Dublin, and it's now apartments, I think. It's all gone. But when we arrived in there, it was like, there were all the units were empty apart from... Uh, someone across from us who was a tie in the tiling business and someone down the hall who was an accountant i love and that there's file arms and hugs tiling <laughs> tiling yeah. accounting i know oh. it's great and they were really sound like you know the, especially the, the, the tiling guy after you know you know when we in the early years it, it wasn't whatever but by the end of the thing the tiling guy's like i think my daughter watches your stuff <laughs> we're like oh cool but uh yeah, re such a sound um, landlord, a fella called Jonathan. And we used to pay him in, uh, we didn't pay him, we didn't have any money. So we we're paying him in cash every month and he always had to chase us for it. <laughs> I said, like, he's just like, he, he liked us because he liked having tenants. And well, more so, he was just a nice guy, really. And, uh, you know, he'd knock on the door and be like, hey, you lads, uh, just chasing up checks. That's what he called them, like, checks. We're not, we're not going to be writing any checks, mate. We're going to be giving you a big bag of coins. <laughs> and, like, we'd been doing street performance one summer, and he got paid, like, the following two months in, like, like <laughs> rocking into the office. And he was just, like, he's laughing his head off. He's like, look, it's all money. I don't mind. And we were like, oh, we're so sorry, like, piling up the 20 cents in one row and then the euros and everything. But, uh, uh, yeah, so that was a, that was a great place. Um, we used to put a different we had like sometimes we we do kind of the exterior shot of the office to kind of set up the scene yeah you know so we would put like doctor surgery you know doctor whoever whoever or the bank of whatever and then it's a you know it's a bank it's just a I think we we probably like all good ideas we probably uh, we probably were inspired by some movie or something we weren't we didn't didn't really know what we were doing but uh we used to change the name on the front of the door every so often and like had like proctologists <laughs> uh, uh, the one that the one that got us in i won't say the trouble because it wasn't true but the one that raised eyebrows was a veterinarian's clinic which we did for one sketch and right so um the landlord knocks on the door and he's like eh, lads he's like yeah what's uh what's the deal with the vet veterinary clinic sign and you're like oh he's just like it's for a sketch. He's like, yeah, I've had three or four inquiries about people <laughs> wondering whether there were going to be animals <laughs> passing through beside oh, their offices, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a that was a that was a great place. Yeah, geez, the rent was rock bottom. Was it? I think we were paying. Yeah, I think when we left there, it, I think we started maybe it was just below two hundred euro a month for an office, like in Dublin. Jesus. I think by the time we left, it was 275. And it was really funny because when he, he, the landlord came, Jonathan came in to, 
at that point we were doing bigger gigs and he kind of he'd been just like he hadn't been charging us properly for rent like i think all the other spaces were starting to fill up and everyone else who was coming in was paying probably double you know yeah like which yeah, is yeah. the going right like you know and uh, he comes in he's like that's it <laughs> You know, we're not gonna complain. Like we play like rock bottom rent. Like just shut up and don't say anything and whatever. But uh, he comes in, he's like, "Lads, uh, he sits down. He's like, uh, you can see it's really difficult for him as well. He's like, um, I'm really sorry. You know, um, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to increase, increase the rent. And uh, we, we were such ourselves. We were like unbelievable it's just like this is like charles dickens are you gonna be throwing us out in our ear and he was like oh we're joking like, obviously joking like and he was laughing his head off and we were like oh god jonathan and then we started to like search around for like he was increasing it by like 20 quid or something we were like seeing what we had in our pockets and everything and he was laughing but uh, yeah he's a, a good guy we just go do another street gig see what we can do yeah 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 he's a, he's a, he was a good guy yeah um, and it yeah, i yeah. and the, the 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 plan then going forward for the I say going forward for the fucking dreadful phrase to use. I mean, ye were a beautifully positioned because you had a nice fan base and everything lined up with this because you wrote every Thursday with a, with a mm-hmm. sketch. It was fucking it was a brilliant like did because as is that what the whole idea was? We're going, well, we're not touring, we may as well turn our focus here. It's like are you putting what I'm saying is are you putting in like a four or five day proper work week? Like Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um yeah, I think that the there's loads of stuff that we've always wanted to do, but they haven't been able to because you're usually gigging, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you kind of take Monday off and then you write on Tuesday, come in on Wednesday, lash out the script and film it, uh, you know, by the evening and then you're home and then you edit it. And by midnight, you're, it's published and or midnight, it's ready to publish and it's out the next day on Thursday. So very kind of intense. And that wasn't every week, you'd, you know, but you know most weeks between what january and um and may you'd be doing that so there was no time to uh kind of do other projects that you wanted to do so one of them was the sitcom or you know at least get an idea for a sitcom because you you know you find yourself you know in in meetings or whatever and we never had anything to give anyone it's like they're like <laughs> you know if some commissioner be like great you want a meeting i was like oh, great yeah we're like, oh, this is gonna be brilliant and they're like hey what have you got and we're like well we could do a sketch show and like no what else do you have? Nothing. <laughs> you know, so so we wanted to have something. There else. was a shock that they were shocked that Foil Arms and Hog wanted to do a sketch show. I mean, you what know, what are you yeah. doing bringing Foil Arms and Hog in? If you know, I think what they're trying to do is they, they want sitcoms or sketches out of fashion or whatever. I mean, I don't know whether it remains out of fashion or I, I it's probably it, to be fair, it probably works better on the internet. You know, I think that that is the new way to do it. But um. You know, rather than the TV sketch show, I, I think to be honest, is is a dead prospect. But uh, so we wanted to do a sitcom, and uh, I wanted to write a movie and to do an album of comedy songs and kind of slowly getting through, through things and the sitcom. At least that's one thing done. The album of songs and working away in it, and uh, I'll do a bit more today, and we're kind of getting there as well, and. I don't know, probably won't finish half the stuff. But there, give it a go. I love give it. it. There hasn't been musical, a proper album of musical comedy done in ages. I love the idea of that. Yeah, yeah. It's funny. Like, it's, um, it'll definitely probably include a bunch of our, you know, our older songs, our songs from our show. Yeah. The ones that work, I guess. And a few of them will have to be, um, uh, you know, fixed up or punched up, as you call it. Um, and then kind of add four or five brand new ones and uh, and then go somewhere and record it and and uh, see what it sounds like and, and is there going to be just be, I'm just basing this on the shirt Connor and before we wrap up <laughs> is there going to be are you going to are you going to be the new Garth Brooks is what I'm saying is there, just, I'm just putting <laughs> yeah, it out there yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I booked five booked five croke parks <laughs> <laughs> gonna be great <laughs> uh, when are we going to see when will we see the sitcom it would sitcom was out last week oh so, it's out uh, it's out the first episode yeah, is out it's, it's out on youtube well it's uh, yeah it's, i suppose it is the first episode it's called episode two but that's only because this sounds stupid that's only because we did an episode one but uh episode <laughs> episode one was i think five minutes long you know or something like that whereas this is 18 minutes long so 
you know, a different prospect, I guess. This would be the, it's almost like a pilot. You don't need to have seen whatever episode one. Well, I'm going to put it in the show notes under this so people at least can subscribe. Is that the best place to follow you? Is YouTube or Facebook the best place to follow you? No, you, YouTube. YouTube is definitely the best place, I think. it's um, Facebook comes and goes, you know, but uh, yeah. YouTube, YouTube, the YouTube crew are solid. Yeah, to be fair, I, I would I would ama- I would be amazed if at some stage you got f- although you probably you could get flagged with some of the stuff you've done all right. Yeah. But imagine ima- imagine who <laughs> the kind of psychopath it would be to have a problem with foil arms and hog like oh, d- really uh, there's every type of person. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah, I could I, there's only a handful of things to give out about, but yeah, you you push it. I'm still I'm still loving the idea of you being in India peddling curry i just <laughs> yeah i know the audacity of it all yeah <laughs> well Connor McKenna, t- thank you so much i've taken up enough of your time Thanks, you're an Tom. absolute gent not man. at all that was an absolute pleasure lovely way to start the day i was like i don't know what i would have been doing but i'm here chatting to you thanks a million. you've got amazing hair amazing short people Likewise. follow us <laughs> <laughs> well I amazement it's a broad yeah. spectrum being amazed is a broad spectrum when it comes to yeah. this <laughs>